So what is the name of your show and where people can find you? Well, it probably won't surprise anybody, but uh, with a cowboy hat and a boot, it's the Wild West Crypto Show. So when I started the show, especially five years ago, I got in space in 2013. It was the Wild Wild West, and it's still the Wild West, but we've tamed it a little bit. We have a long way to go. And to your point, the very reason you do what you do and I do what I do is to share the word about the future of money and the evolution of technology. And I got into the space because I firmly believe believe that the way that we can play in the financial field globally will lift more people out of poverty than anything that has ever happened in the past. And we will also see technology and everything else accelerate to a degree all over the world like we've never seen before. And being part of that is awesome. Oh, I could not I agree could. anymore. What I love about crypto is it just it really makes it all inclusive. There's no genders. There's no you know races. It's uh, you know you are who you are. And actually, we're also here you know to promote uh, women of Web three because yes. uh, you know I think this is an industry that uh, can really bring you know like my girlfriend is here and she's a founder of uh, Token Place and our, she got into crypto because of her son who is a teenager. You know, in the way I got into gaming because my son is a gamer. So it's like I think it's very inclusive between different generations um, and different gamers, different people, different cultures. And I think it's a really a way for people to learn in you, but also to make a huge impact in the world. You, you know, it's interesting you say that. So my sons and I, I have two boys that are raised as a single father, and we were kind of in business together. And But it was a little bit different, the generational or legacy businesses where the kids take over the dad's wood shop or whatever. In crypto, we're all playing in this. And of course, as an old man, I've had to learn to become more techie than I thought I would ever be, you know, but watching it happen and then watching all the crazy things. And I'd have never thought in 2013 when I got into the space, what was an NFT really? We never thought it'd be, what is DeFi, decentralized finance? Now we're seeing the metaverse and Web3 and it is crazy, the acceleration of the things that are going on. What's really funny to me, and I've observed this for a number of years, the U.S. has been real slow to adopt this because it competes with the existing financial systems. But the cows out of the barn, and being a cowboy, I can say that I've chased many cows that have gotten out of the barn. So the cows out of the barn, now you have to decide what are we going to do with the cow? Because he's not going back in the barn. A lot of people are afraid of regulation, but realistically, you know, it's not going. You know, it's too. It's. Uh, I mean, like I hate using the phrase "too big to fail," but in a way, when you have a global community of so many people, you know, regulation coming in place is a good thing because we actually know what rules we can play with. Uh, we know what to do, what not to do, but also it would weed out people who are abusing the crypto, who are abusing the cryptocurrencies. It will weed out the, you know, the the companies who just want to, you know, like to just uh, get their tokens to go up and crush them, mm -hmm. you know, that will all go away. You know, mm -hmm. people who are real people, who are believers in technology, who are here to do good, will stay. And we kind of actually need that downturn. We need that shakeout in the industry. What do you think? It's absolutely true, and I've seen it, where it was the write a white paper, throw it out there, make a bunch of money, and then run. And there were no real solutions in the space, okay? So most cryptocurrencies, there's been about, you know, depending on who you listen to, between two and 400,000 cryptocurrencies created. There's somewhere today you, you can look at coin market cap they show about 13,500 of them somewhere around 20,000 still exist right but now we're seeing real world solutions problems being solved the accountability of governments and everything else it does hold but the transparency that this creates it is literally life-changing but not only for the united states but for the entire world and so the, it is time to embrace this so if you can't beat it you may as well become part of it right 100 percent you know and DeFi creates so many opportunities for people you know you can use the arbitrage opportunities with the flesh loans i mean we don't have before only big banks can uh, hedge funds can uh, participate in different arbitrage or opportunities right now pretty much anybody can if they take their time to understand and to learn it's it can be a pretty steep learning curve I mean no doubt about it before it will get more you know more um, accepted globally and the technology is going to evolve you need to learn you need to take time and you always need to do your own research of course I always uh, say that but I think it's still uh, such a great opportunity for people to get to kind of control their own finances control their future to make your money and to you know to, to educate and support generations exactly so so you know globally three billion 
million people approximately unbanked, yeah. don't have an address. But now in a, in a world of seven billion people where five and a half billion have a cell phone and that cell phone is their address and it's their bank. And uh, my partner and I, when I first got into this and started doing it, went to a senior center and we wanted to educate people about cryptos and they really didn't want to hear it because they said it'll never apply to us. And so I held up my cell phone and I said, how many of y'all have one of these? And every one of them held up their cell phones and I said, how many of y'all send pictures of your grandkids to your family? And they all did. And I said, what if you could send money to a grandchild in need anywhere in the world, literally in minutes for almost no fees, do you see a value? And they went from being like this to being like this. And so, so it is, it, it's going to affect every single generation. I've gifted my grandkids, okay, bought them different cryptocurrencies, socking them away. Some of them may not make it, but one of them goes out there and runs can be life changing. One of our projects, Original Gamer Life, you know, like we are, there's um, 3 billion gamers, and that includes, you know, the phones, uh, devices globally, and a lot of them are unbanked, and a lot of them have issues. So we're trying to utilize the gaming community by building a metaverse for video gamers, kind of a Twitch meets Teams, but also call it a multiverse because we want to be all inclusive. There's so many different metaverses being built, but there is nobody addressing, you know, like how to intercompatibility. <laughs> Int Intercompatibility. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> My tongue is twisted. I'm just talking so much. Sorry about that. <laughs> but you know, like realistically, you know, that's an issue because uh, we just uh, watched the panel. You could, how do you connect? You know, you have this person, that metaverse, that game. So what we're trying to create is actually a central hub that will connect with other games mm -hmm. that you can just go there and play whatever the game of your choice you can earn crypto just by doing simple tasks and also by utilizing you know health and wellness it's a lot of it about mental health promoting you know like how do you promote your health and wellness into the metaverse into the gaming space mm -hmm. uh, into digital space and actually bring it into the real life mm -hmm. so that's what we're trying to do we're all inclusive bringing other metaverses together uh, building other metaverses connecting the games but also uh, encouraging gamers and rewarding them mm -hmm. for living a healthy lifestyle outside of the gaming activity. Mm -hmm. So there's just creates tremendous opportunities to really make our world a much better place. You, you know, I, well, one of the things, especially as an old guy, I'm, I'm an inventor, okay? I've got seven patents and so I come from the IP space. What I'm loving seeing, especially even young people, almost anyone out there, that are all of a sudden their creative minds are opening and they're finding solutions that nobody even knew existed. And so it, it's that kind of global innovation because everyone God gave us free will and we have a mind that can wander and do anything it wants to do right and now being able to put that thing to work and solving problems for people and there's nothing more gratifying to see a smile on someone's face for something you created that helped them in some incremental way and we're, we see that happen again and again and again and I like to say it's happening at the speed of crypto it's incredible how this is going on and and then you know when you look at the interconnectivity of the entire planet in a way that's never happened starlink i mean there will be a time in the very near future where everyone on this planet will be connected one way or another and it stands to benefit all of mankind it's awesome 100 percent. i mean like look what what how much technology innovation happened in the last hundred years and the way it's progressing it's, it's, it's almost actually scary how fast the technology is coming around, you know? <laughs> and uh, when you look at the, um, you know, Marvel or DeFi uh, movie, or DeFi, <laughs> when you look in the diff all the movies that, uh, sci-fi movies that you thought that will never exist, and now everything is happening. Mm -hmm. You know, people are already traveling to the space. Uh, you know, next thing we're going to have, you know, flying cars, and uh, but it already, it's all exists. Yes. So, I mean, uh, and for those who are denying crypto and denying that technological advancement, I think they're just uh, trying to uh, kind of, you know, closing their eyes on what's in inevitable in this world because it will be the future. DeFi will be the future, but it will be regulated. The other countries are going to step in, uh, but it will create uh, so many communication and um, financial uh, exchanges without borders and com connecting people around the world. So I think it's just a beautiful thing. We can end it on that. This whole thing in this movement is such a beautiful thing. And uh, thank you so much for giving me a little bit of time today. I'm usually on the other side of this, but this was kind of a joint interview yeah. thing. So yeah, good. high five to you. <laughs> You're awesome. Thank you so much. Uh, thanks so much, Doc. Yeah, I appreciate it. Uh.